So in the second part of this video, I'm going to show you how I finish this relief carving of a succulent. Now, the finished product is going to be sent to the customer with bare wood. It's a design for um, someone's business. So the original, I'll try and remember to put a, a photo of it in here, is actually a watercolor painting. So he's going to paint it, which is awesome because I don't like painting things. And it'll save him a little bit of money that I don't have to do it. But I did spray this with water so that the wood looks a little bit more saturated just for the color um, in the camera. The detail shows up a little bit better when it is sprayed. But if you were to make something like this and clear coat it, this is essentially what it will look like. So this part should be pretty short. This was a pretty quick, easy project. Um, uh, mostly there's a ladybug that went on top, which will be in this video, as well as finishing up some of the center of the succulent. So in the last video, I was using blue tape to designate um, which leaves I had done undercutting in. And the reverse of that is in order to finish sand these, I'm removing the blue tape and that will designate which leaves are done. It surprisingly can get kind of confusing not doing it in a, in a way where you mark them. Um, you can easily forget where you are in the process. So as you can see, in order to finish these up, I'm hand sanding a lot. Um, the Dremel went and smoothed a lot of this out, but I went through with the chisel just to remove some of the high spots and the ridges, which you will get from Dremel work. But most of the final sanding I'm doing with 120 grit sandpaper by hand. Um, with, it, with doing it by hand, you could kind of fit all those contours. So that's how I finished all those outer leaves. To do the interior, I don't have a chisel set small enough was really the problem. So I did a lot of this power carving with a Dremel. I would have preferred to use chisels, um, especially with the tips of these leaves. I broke some of them off during the process. You could see some of them, the glue lines from some I put back together. And the Dremel's a little aggressive and it did chip some of this off. But you could see I'm just using some of my smaller bits to essentially do what I did on the bigger leaves going through and creating depth and undercutting all of those sections. So this rounded bit is not really an ideal way to do this, but it's really the smallest one I had in order to get into these parts. You can see I'm just basically just going down. Now this one's a, a kind of like a sanding bit. Once again, it's not the ideal shape, but I could get into these deeper parts of the leaves and smooth some of this out because the hand sanding works really well, but if you don't initially get it somewhat smooth, it will take forever. You can see I already had most of this done. It's really only that inner portion I couldn't use the chisels with. I could just go through and, and clean it up. Everything's always finished with sandpaper. It removes all the ridges and, and just smooths over, especially the edge curves are easiest to do with, with sandpaper. And like I said, I'm using water to saturate the wood in two senses. It absorbs the, the water and then it that in turn saturates it in the sense that the colors can be seen better. The colors are saturated. You can kind of get an ideal how everything looks, see any spots I miss sanding. Like I said, the paint, the customer's going to paint this, so I'm giving them the, the raw finished piece. At this point, I could take my cleat off the back, and I'm just going to um, uh, taper these edges a little bit more, make them a little thinner. I didn't do this initially because I realized quite quickly that the tips of these leaves are quite fragile, especially the ones that don't that don't run with the grain. And um, so I waited till the end. I didn't want them too thin while I was chiseling and they would keep breaking off. In order to do the ladybug, I'm going to start with making a rough, rough uh, cutout of it. I have these weird um, pieces of maple. I don't actually know what they're from. I have a bag of them. I'm assuming they were chair parts at one point. So this rounded bulbous piece of maple, I'm going to cut it in half. That will be the ladybug body. And then that other one, which has been cut off of something else at some point, will we'll make the head. And then this is going to be, instead of taking a block of lumber and carving out of it, um, this will be the easiest way to do it. Also, even though this is going to be painted, the maple and the, the cypress have similar, similar, similar hues. So I'm using a dowling jig in order to connect the, the head to the body. This way when I start carving, if I'm using chisels or rotary tools, whatever I end up using, um, I won't have to worry about them disconnecting. If I do end grain to end grain uh, glue just for the attachment, it won't be super secure. 
As you can see, I just use the doweling jig, put the dowel in there, and then I can attach it. And then I just put this in my vise and I let it set up overnight. It's still cold enough that the glue dries pretty slowly. So then the next day I just drew the outline of the ladybug on the piece. I cut the ladybug out from that drawing I had so it's to scale. Um, the, this is not an aerial view of the ladybug. It's kind of at an angle. So I made sure to cut it out so I could get the right proportions. And then I just trimmed this out on the scroll saw. This was the easiest way to do it because it's such a small piece. I could remove the bulk of this material I won't need pretty quickly. And I already have a, a fairly nice rough shape after this, after this point. So then in order to attach this to the piece, I'm once again using a dowel. So I just drilled a hole, a dowel hole in the center. I believe these are 5 16 inch dowels that I'm using. I left the dowel long so that I could use this in my vise. So just glued that in place. And then I could once again use this in my vise. So someone in the comments of my last video made a good point that they use a square block of wood in the vise so that they could turn it much quicker than the rectangular piece I use. That's actually a really great tip, so I'm mentioning it in this video. Going forward, I'll do that instead of the rectangle. It just saves the time of having to open and close the, vi the vise that much. So then I cut the body away from the head because like I said, it's a weird angle. You're kind of, your eyes kind of looking at the side of the ladybug. So that line across the top is really important because that's kind of where the light is hitting it in the photo, which means in real life, I want to taper this a little bit to, to that line. So I'm just using a rough, a rough bit for this and I'm just rounding this over. Ladybug's bodies are pretty, pretty round on top. They're like half circles essentially. So I'm just tapering the head and the body all kind of consistent with that line. Eventually it will be a smooth curve from the top of the piece all the way down to the side is essentially what I'm doing. At this point you can see when I'm starting to remove material my I was a little overzealous with my original dowel hole connecting the head and it actually comes out the back side of the ladybug. So I drilled that out a little bit and then added a, a dowel plug to hide it. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. I could have filled this with putty or, or something like that, but this will be quick. I could keep, keep working on the piece with that plug in there. And then, like I said, I'm just continuing to create that curve, making it arch over from the edge to the top. So it's one continuous arch as well as the head. There's not much depth or delineation between the body and the head. There's a little bit of an indent. So that's what I'm doing here. You, in the photo that I'm looking at, you could kind of tell that that's what I'm talking about. So I'm using a dovetail bit. I'm making ever so slightly of an indent between the body and the head because there is in the photo um, that sort of indent. And then I'm going through with the taper jig and I'm just I'm feathering out this material so that it doesn't look like I just put a, a large arch into there. So I'm feathering out the material in the front and I'm feathering out the material in the body so it looks more like an indent more so than a line. Um, that's the dovetailing bit I'm using because the exact same thing happens at the head. The head of the ladybug is actually quite small. The, the large black part on the back is still part of the body. So then once that was done, I just go through and, and sand this using the sanding bit on the Dremel makes life really easy, kind of tapering the body a, a bottom a little bit. I didn't really spend too much time on the bottom and then smoothing out those indents. This sanding will also um, finish hiding that, that uh, cut I made with the dovetail bit. You can see it's pretty prominent in the video. By the time I'm done, it's, it's much harder to see. So I'm using a smaller, uh, smaller printout I have of the drawing and I'm kind of mapping out where the hole goes since this bit is seven, six, uh, 5 16 I'm just drilling a slight hole into one of the leaves and then that can fit in there. And then I'd obviously cut down the dowel in order to get the ladybug to fit in there perfectly. 
So at this point, I'm not going to go crazy with detail on this because the original is obviously a com uh, computer graphic, so it doesn't have a lot of detail or dimension, but I am going to add some antenna and and legs to this. So I'm going to be using some 22 gauge wire as well as some smaller uh, um, finishing nails essentially to, to do the legs. So I'm just drilling into the face a little bit. I'm drilling at an angle so these two holes actually connect in the, the middle of the head so that way I could use one piece of wire. And then for the legs, I'm just looking at the photo because they're they're placed in a particular position. And once again, just angling into the body in order to drill those holes. For the nails, I'm just simply putting them in the hole, cutting them off so they only stick out a little bit, keep the proportions all accurate. And then once I have all six, I'm going through some pliers and just slightly bending them in order to give a little bit more dimension to the legs. And then I'm just going to use some super glue in order to hold everything in place. And then as you can see, with that wire, it's one continuous hole. I can just pull it through and then trim it down to size. Hold everything in place with super glue. And then that's pretty much done. So that's that trimmed down to size and shaped a little bit, pretty much matching the photo. And then once again, re-wetting this with some water so that you could see all the details and the grain. It just makes everything add a little bit more depth to it when, when it's saturated with water like that. And then just a bunch of photos of the, the pretty much finished piece at this point. 